so we are going to be talking about copyright today um, because we have so many opportunities to grab creators' works, whether it's an image, a video, music, and it's fast and easy. Um, we need to kind of really look at the copyright rules and, and regulations as both teachers for our own information, but what we have our students do as well. So one of the first things I like to ask sixth graders when I teach a creator's responsibility is, is this mashup legal of Taylor Swift's songs? I got the Okay, so um, what Louisa Wendorf and Devin Dawson do is they take Taylor Swift songs and they mash them together and they post, they have their own YouTube channel, and with every hit they're making money. Um, Taylor Swift has posted on this um, their YouTube channel that she loves it, and then lo and behold I walked into the Taylor Swift concert whenever that was a year or two ago, and this is up on the big screen playing. And this was posted in 2014. <clears throat> so, um, is it legal or not? Well, clearly it makes me think it is, if it was shown at her concert and she likes it. So then the, the question becomes, why is it legal? And why are other mashups maybe taken down or pulled down from your, um, YouTube because they aren't created legally? Um, what I think we can be pretty sure of is the reason this is legal is it is a transformative work. So they took her works and made it completely different in their own. It was a whole different sound creatively. And um, which is why I think it is. Other mashups that maybe just take pieces of an, uh, an artist's work, like a song by Taylor Swift, and take her singing it and put it in exactly in the mashup, those have been pulled down according to some of the research I've done because um, that was copyrighted material. So, just an example. Alright, so we'll talk, you'll understand more about that as we go through. But the objectives for today are to examine the copyright principles and how they apply to our classrooms basically as teachers um, and how we're going to be um, using materials and how our students use materials. And then I'll give you quite a few tools that will help you and your students be copyright compliant. They're all in this slideshow. They're all linked. So <clears throat> if you were going to do 21st century skills, assess them or not, um, you could give this to your kids and you could assess it or have the kids assess themselves. I just pulled three whenever they would do any kind of project using technology. Um, the first highlight is involving their digital footprint. That's the proficient one. The second one is their communications are guided by ethical standards regarding digital communications. And the third is that quoting, paraphrasing, or citing information that they're using that they're grabbing. And that's all in the critical thinking. So copyright, the definition of it, is a form of protection given to the authors or creators of original works of authorship, including literary, dramatic, musical, artistic, and other intellectual works. Um, I think we probably knew, you know, what that definition would be. But what I want to draw your attention to is the in-slide um, citation. So I put the title of the article, came from the web, cited so that if I were to give this to students, I should tell them where I got it. Now, when I do present to students, most of the time I put the website there because I might not show them my work cited. My work cited would say what, what we do came from you know, because that's the title of an article. But that is the proper MLA citation. The key is kids just have to be indicating where they get work, their stuff from. And so do I as a teacher. And <clears throat> to be honest, sometimes I forget. I'll pull a definition and I won't put where it came from or I, I, I just forget. I'm doing it fast. Um, but I have to do that too. So copyright violations involve viewing somebody's work without permission. And did you know our students' work is copyrighted even without a special license? So when they create something, um, they don't have to apply for anything. Their material, and so would ours, be copyrighted just by the fact that we wrote it or um, sang it or whatever we were doing. And plagiarism is passing off somebody else's work as your own. Now, 
copyright, we're not really infringement. We're not really saying it's our work. We're just not telling who it is. And plagiarism is saying this is what I, you know, made up. And whether that's intentional or unintentional doesn't really matter. The same consequences apply. So I feel like kids are really pretty good at knowing at least what is plagiarism because we've done a really good job, I think, of teaching them that. Copyright, I feel like now that they can grab so much and it's so easy and maybe we spend more time on the process of getting it from somewhere that we forget we have to actually give credit to, to whom that came from. So that's, I think, what we need to focus on. All right, so in education, we have um, something that we have all heard of. It's called fair use. And so that's a legal doctrine that promotes freedom of expression by permitting the unlicensed use of copyright protected works in certain circumstances, education being one of them. So um, well, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But that second part there, without reading it word for word, what it means is there used to be this certain percentage that you could use or like 20% or whatever it was, or a number of minutes or of works. And as soon as you went past that, then you were in violating copyright. But now that's not so anymore. They're saying case by case, and let's go ahead and evaluate um, copyright or fair use on these guidelines. The first one is purpose. So why are you using it? Um, in education, we get to use it. And we still have to cite it always, but we get to use it. Um, reporting as well, and then criticism. So have you ever wondered how, like, Saturday Night Live or Jimmy Fallon or any of those people can take and just, like, obliterate somebody's creative work legally? And that's, like, a critical, um, uh, what do I say, just uh, interpretation of the creators. So it's okay. Creating a transformative work would have been that mashup example. Um, spontaneous and or one-time use. Oh, I found something that's perfect for my class today. I'm just going to use it. Cause I, but going forward, I'm going to, you know, approach that in a way that's not violating copyright. Um, the nature of the information. So nonfiction is typically going to be citing on the fair use, but fiction, uh, not always. Published usually is fair use. Unpublished, not. Um, amount, how much do you want to use? Now, this one, the example is not a percent anymore, but you use only the amount needed to achieve your objective. So a teacher came to me um, last year and said, I have a documentary that I'd like to use in my class that totally works with my curriculum. I found it online. It's free to use. Can I use it? And to be honest, I didn't know. So I called the library director, and she said, if it's supplementary, absolutely. But now, if I took that and similar documentaries like it, like there was a series, and that's what I used for the bulk of my curriculum, now that would be an infringement, because then we'd have to buy a textbook, or we'd have to buy that series. Um, how does the use impact the market value of the work? Um, so, you know, people, these, these artists, that's their job. They have to be paid by, you know, obviously. But um, we have to legally obtain the, the work, for sure, to be able to use it. And then if it's out of print, we typically can use it. Um, in it or if we can't obtain sufficient copies, then that's fair use. Then it's checklist. And all these links are live. So if you want to click on that, um, if you ever wondered, on the left-hand side is the favoring fair use. On the other side is not. So if you had a question, you could use this format this form here to figure it out. You can always come to me and um, chances are I'll need to do some research on it. And so I would go and um, do some research online, probably call some people and see and then let you know. The district policies are linked here. West Fargo doesn't have one. Um, Fargo's was just rewritten this summer because it wasn't updated anymore because of all the changes and the ability for kids to grab stuff. All right, so here's probably what you're mostly interested in. How do I avoid copyright violations in my high-tech classroom? So your students and even yourself. So when do I cite as a teacher? Pretty much always. Whenever I use someone else's music, images, movies, video clips, text, etc. Et and here's the kicker, whether it's a free or public resource or not. So it doesn't matter if it's royalty-free. You always have to cite it. So when in doubt, cite. 
kids the same thing. When do my students cite? Always. So I put even in notes. So if they're grabbing from websites to take notes, they should just jot down the website that they got it from or the name of the article on the website. Or they're not jotting down typically anymore. Or a lot of times they're just pulling from the computer copy and pasting. All right, so something you're going to hear more and more is called Creative Commons License. What that is, is it's uh, copyright has more stringent guidelines, whereas Creative Commons is going to give some more permission for the works to be utilized. So anything that is uh, provided by Creative Commons, we're pretty much, it's free to use. We still have to cite it, but we know it's usable. So um, if you click on the search for content, that's a Creative Commons resource that has different resources available that are reusable and we know they're reusable so the kids could search any of these and I bet you're familiar with some of them. Have you heard of Flickr before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're just kind of all right here. Now if I click on say Google Images I believe what it's going to do is take me to the filtered Creative Commons images. So if I, if I search those um, it's going to take me to ones I can use. And I'm going to show you that in a little bit. We're going to practice. Um, this would be a fun lesson for your students, and I could come in and do that. But if they created something, we could have them license their own work by going through the Creative Commons um, form. It would be kind of fun. All right, now I have these um, questions that are going to just kind of introduce each topic area. And so this first one we're going to talk about is images. So true or false, as long as my students cite their source for an image, they are in compliance with copyright law. And this is a trick question. So having said that, true or false, you think? That's exactly right. So it is false because it does depend on what the picture is. So some online images are not available for use. So sometimes it'll have the watermark, well, that's obvious, you're not supposed to use those, but some of them, it says they're not available for reuse. Um, and now here's where I want to go to a website here, and I'll show you. All right, so middle school resources, first of all. Does everybody know how to get to them? I think everybody here does. Okay, so Britannica, Student Resources and Context, eLibrary, Explora is new. Well, those are kind of no-brainers to use because they all have usable images and automated citation tools. So if you have your kids do something, you know, I can help you kind of figure out which one would work, if they'll work. Because sometimes they don't. Sometimes we have to go out into Google, and that's much easier to just do it that way. Um, but for a lot of our research, boy, those are, they have great stuff. Um, Creative Commons is going to take us out into those uh, sources I just showed you, and some is onto Google. Um, Photos for Class, Library of Congress has some great um, reusables. And then Google Images, if you just want to click on that, I want to show you something that I was not aware of. So if you go to Google Images and you just search up something, I'm going to search up Aaron Rodgers, just because. And if I go to Search Tools, right above all the photos, and click on that, right there. I go down to usage rights, I click on the down arrow, and I go to labels for reuse. Now I have all of the photos that are labeled for reuse of Aaron Rodgers. Now I know those are okay for sure. And wouldn't it be kind of cool if the kids knew that there was a place to go where they didn't even have to worry about whether it was okay or not? No, they still have to cite it, but we know these are labeled for reuse. So that's one cool option. And Nancy drew my attention to this one, and this is Google Docs. So if we open up a tab and just open up a Google Doc, or a Google Slide, so if, this would be awesome for a Google Slide presentation too. But in Google, they've got a tool called Explore, and they've changed it. It used to be their research tool it's called Explore now. It's in the bottom right-hand corner, and if you just hover over it, it'll say Explore, and you click on that square with a star, and then you'll get a research tool that will go out to Google. And so you go ahead and type in your search, and you get websites, and you'll also get images. And I'm not positive, 
but I think these are all available for reuse. Because